I'm talking about the classical musics of India and its, um, and its many influences in different genres. And it's called Shastriya Sangeet, that's the, kind of the term in India. Shastra means kind of like a treatise, so it's like learned music. Um, okay, so uh, music and or thoughts on music and dance and theater go back thousands of years in India. Um, the main hallmark treatise is this thing called the Natya Shastra. Natya means uh, theater, and so I said Shastra is like a treatise. And so this, this treatise, it talks about how music, art, and dance, uh, or music, dance, and theater all go together. Kind of like uh, Wagner and his Gesam Kunswar, right? Everything kind of goes together. So this is written in uh, 200 AD. And it's a description of effective performance in theater, dance, and music. And it's seen as um, the fifth Veda. Have you guys heard of the Vedas in India? So the Vedas are, are the holy Hindu scriptures. And if this, and there are four of them. This is kind of seen um, officially as the fifth one. So you can see just how um, important music and dance and theater are. Um, ingrained or a part of Indian Indian culture. So there are things like, you can see, these things, the pleasure, mirth, sorrow, these, these uh, emotions are called bhavas. And in the Natya Shastra, written almost like 2,000 years ago, we talk about how uh, uh, acting and music can bring out these certain bhavas. Um, so this especially it talks about certain ways of, of, of using the body, like for pleasure, the eyes and eyebrows, and the, the way you can, you can move them to create this, this feeling. And so it also talks about this um, in terms of musical modes um, and you know, how everything is, just goes together. But the Natya Shastra doesn't mention what I'm mainly going to talk about, which is the Raga, and that is the, the sort of quintessential framework of, of Indian like Shastriya Sangeet classical music. Um, raga kind of developed uh, around the first millennium. And have you guys heard of the term Raga? Yeah? You guys kind of know what it is? Well, during our non-Western essay, yeah. I, I did mine on Indian music, but I think I got the definition wrong. <laughs> what did you say it was? Because it says, there is no counterpart in Western musical theory. And I think it's because I was like, raised in Western music that I like couldn't understand it. Like it's like in a different way. And then I just kind of describe it as like But no, but, but it is partially it is partially, yeah. So okay. you thought it was a mode of yeah, what else you say. Uh-huh. See it I mean if you want to explain it to people who are uh, uh, knowledgeable in Western music, you should bring up the concept of a scale because mm. it's partially that. It's it's like um, it's like saying a human being is a skeleton. If it is true, we are <laughs> skeletons. It's partially yeah, my. I mean, would it come, would it be just like improvisation, like when musicians improvise? I mean, it's not. I know it's more than that, but like mm. if, if you're gonna compare, it would kind of be that, right? The the raga is impro improvisation. Yeah, like it, it's. I mean, isn't it like, <coughs> doesn't it say like the melodic basis for composition? Like, yes, just like the scale is the mm -hmm. melodic ba basis oh, for right. harmony. So, in, in a similar way. But um, it's not the, the reason, so I'll read it. The term rock has no counterpart in um, Western music, musical theory. The concept of rock is based on the idea that certain characteristic patterns of notes evoke a heightened state of emotion. These patterns of notes are a fusion of scalar and melodic elements, and each rag can be described in terms of its ascending. So they call that ascending is called aro, and descending avaro lines, which may involve turns. So it's not always just straight up. It might be uh, like C D E F E F G A G A B C. So it's lots of. It's not just. Uh, uh, an up and or ascending and descending scale. Um, 
in which certain intervals are emphasized and attention is focused on particular notes. Like if you take C major, it's, you're not going to say that E is the best note of this scale. Or we, we have the con con concept of tonic dominant. So there's a little bit of that, but I'll, I'll explain a little bit more later. So more than 200 rags are extant, and each is a melodic basis for composition and improvisation. Most of the rags have been in existence for several centuries and have evolved to their present form as a result of successive interpretations by generations of musicians. So if we say that a rag is um, a scale, that's kind of like saying a human being is, is a skeleton. It's not the fully fleshed out version. Like if I, if I say Sean, um, he is a, a, a very intelligent, kind person. He has dark hair, um, light or medium skin. Um, he has a, a very pleasing personality. If you never met Sean, did you know? You kind of know what he was like, but you wouldn't really know fully, right? So in the same way, the rag, if you say notes of the rag, or the, the notes in this rag are C, D, E, F, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It kind of tells you a little bit about what the rag is, but not fully. It doesn't talk about um, the, the certain notes that might be emphasized in the rag, the certain uh, melodic patterns like falling from G to D is very characteristic for this drug, and it helps you to identify the drug. Because sometimes certain drugs can have the same collection of notes. And how would you be able to identify which drug is being played? It's what notes are emphasized, what certain characteristic phrases are played, um, which help you to identify that, that drug. Because the drug is often described as great practitioners of drug are able to um, paint a face almost, and you can I see the face with the skeleton of those notes, and they, they flesh it out. And if you can't do it well, then you can't really see the face. And rags are often described as as people. So um, along those lines, Indian music is based on the subtleties of harmony or uh, of melody. So Indian music is based on the subtleties of melody, whereas um, of course, Western music, it's, it's hallmark is, is harmony. Um, so, and in the South, have you guys heard of Carnatic music, Hindustani music? Yeah. Kind of, but, so I want to kind of go into what are the differences? They're not always very clear. Um, but, so, Carnatic music is, in, is the music of South India, uh, classical music, and Hindustani is, music is the music of North India. And I think when you probably think of Indian music, you might be, be hearing Hindustani music, the sitar. Um, but that being said, they're very related. So sometimes it's hard to find, figure out the differences if you're not really immersed in it. Um, they're believed to have a common origin, although there are a lot of controversies about this. Um, Karnatic music is considered to be more purely Hindu music. It's very spiritual, very obviously spiritual. The text is very um, obviously in, in uh, generation of Hindu gods, and it's, there's no metaphor. Whereas in Hindustani music, sometimes there's a, a description of earthly love, which is a metaphor for divine love, so it's a little bit more secular in a way. Whereas um, Carnatic music is, is very, very spiritual. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the division between uh, Western classical music and jazz a little bit. Uh, Carnatic music is very kriti-based, so that's, it's work-based. Uh, there's, a, there's a text and you want to follow it. Although there is a lot more room for improvisation than Western classical music. Whereas Hindustani music, there's a bandish, so there's like a head, a line, like two lines of music, just like in jazz and then from there you want to go off. So there's a lot more improvisation in, in Hindustani music. Um, so Karnatic music, it uses this, um, it's called the Mera Karta Division of Classifying Ragas from a 1550 trees from the Mera Kalamiki. Um, so, and then the Hindustani counterpart, it uses a thought classification of ragas um, which is much more, and it was in the 20th century, and it's, it's much more loose, 
And that's why the word on the street is kind of, Carnatic music is a little bit more intellectual, whereas Hindustani music is a little bit more for pleasure and enjoyment. Kind of like we have stereotypes about Western classical music and jazz. We think jazz is for enjoyment and pleasure, although there's so much theory in, involved in it. Where, and we think that Carnatic or Western classical music is more intellectual, although there's a, there's a lot of to be enjoyed in it as well. So we have these odd divisions. And they're somewhat true, these stereotypes, but, but of course not, not fully at all. Um, so Carnatic music uses, it has heavy use of this, of this term called gamaka. And gamak is like a, a, a shading of notes. It's kind of like Indian vibrato almost in Western classical music. Will, shake up, uh, will vibrate the notes, whereas maybe if you sing something in jazz, it won't vibrate in that sort of way. In that same way in Hindustani music, you're not, a lot of pure tones are more, um, are more desired. So I'll demonstrate a little bit. so there's a fourth in between, so it's much more resonant. So if I were to play um, the major scale or the rag that's um, kind of a, uh, equivalent to the major scale in Carnatic music, it's called Shankara Bharnam. So you're not going to play it. That's just the tone collection, but that's not the face of Shankara Bharnam. You will be like... That, that kind of, that's, that's called gamak in Carnatic music. of that, it's a little bit drier, so what's, what's uh, the, the, the ornamentation that's used a lot in Hindustan music is called a mean, it's just, just a sliding between the note, but not so much of a shake. So it's shading of the note, a lot of shaking. Um, and the instrumental ensembles are, are a little bit different and that can help you figure out if it's Carnatic music or Hindustani music. Um, the instrumental ensemble of Carnatic music um, is often a vocalist and then a, a drum called the Mridangam. It, it kind of, if you've seen, you've probably seen a tabla, right? The tabla and the sitar, so that's, that's Hindustani music. Bidangam is like a, like, a, uh, like a circular box, it's like an ovalish kind of shape, and then you kind of slam it on the sides to make, um, to make rhythms. And then also a veena, which is kind of looks like a sitar, and veena and the sitar, they think it might be related, but veena is just an older instrument. Because Karnatan music is kind of a little bit older than Hindustan music. Um, whereas the instrumental ensemble of, the, of Hindustani music is a vocalist, 
um, a tabla player, a sarangi, and often the sarangi nowadays today is replaced by a violinist. Because when the British were in India, they kind of adapted the Indian, um, into uh, Indian music ensembles. And also, usually this vocalist and the sitarist won't play together, but it'll be one or the other. And I'll, I'll show the ensembles a little bit later. And then, like I said, in Hindustani music, it often speaks, of, it seems like secular love, uh, but the love of Radha Krishna, there are two, two gods. Um, but in India, it's very polytheistic, and gods often have human forms or human characteristics. And uh, so, this the metaphor of the Radha Krishna love, which seems very earthly and erotic um, in, in, in these songs, is actually <coughs> taken to be more of, more of as a metaphor for divine love. Whereas Karnataka music, it just, it's, it's very obviously just spiritual. Um, so, like I said, the Carnatic music is a little more systematic. That's why it's seen to be more intellectual. We have, there's this thing called the Mela Katna system, and it divides. So there's 72 ragas which have um, seven notes in them, and it's very systematic. So um, it, you, if you take the, let me show you, sorry. <coughs> So you can, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are the first um, tetrachords on the piano. Um, you can make 12 of them all together, all the combinations. And then you can make six other combinations of the last four um, notes of, inside the 12 notes of the, of within an octave. And so if you do 12 times 6, it's 72. So it, it has characteristics, or it, ha it characterizes um, all the notes, or all the combinations that can be found, and, um, and creates the drugs for every um, combination of notes that can be made within the octave. So in that way, Carnatic music, um, and here, so this is, uh, Right here, so it's called, this, this is a, the Bana tetrachord is, is just C, D, E, F, and then the Ma tetrachord is just G, um, A, B, C, and so that would make, like I said, Shankara Bharanam, which is, it is that major scale. So it has, it, has, it, um, it has all the combinations of all the seven notes that you can make within um, the, 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 the octave. So, Carnatic music is much more systematic in that way, whereas Hindustani music, it uses this uh, idea of the thought, and it's very, uh, a little bit arbitrary, and it's not as systematic as Carnatic music. Um, so these are all the thoughts, and they're just names of um, note collections. Yes? The last one by Ravi, that's the one I use in my essay. Uh -huh. Is that uh, it's like a minorish sounding uh -huh. of tone? Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's just a collection, so it's, church modes, right. and, but these are not all the rags in, in North Indian music, they're called pots, and rags fit into side and side. Yeah. So, in terms of Western and non-Western music, I just kind of think of it as like the same species of like human discovering music at like different times in different places, just like, because like a lot of it sounds like us, but it was just like discovered not in a way that ours was, because they were like a bunch of years apart or a bunch of miles away. You mean like the church modes or? Yeah, so like 
were were those influenced by the English or did? Uh, oh no no yeah exactly. So. Well, so this system of classification was some. A lot of people were against it in India because a certain wildness can be good. Like you have to standardize everything about like fitting all the rabs within a certain cut. It actually doesn't make sense a lot, and I'll, and I'll explain. But after the British, or like, towards the beginning, in the beginning of the 20th century, and to, like, towards the middle, they were trying to systematize it to create sort of a, a national identity. Nationalism was kind of still going around, around then. And so they wanted to create Hindustani music as a national music. And then obviously Western music was very systematized. They thought, oh, we should do this as well. Mm -hmm. But it kind of, it doesn't always mm -hmm. correspond. And it's a, some people are, are against it even in India um, right now. But so let me, so the, these are all. <coughs> so this, these are just the different parts. Bilabal is just the tone <coughs> collection corresponding to um, the major scale. And then, yeah, so I'll just play a few of them. This kid, he kind of sings them, it's kind of cute. Yeah. When uh, that person was singing the scales, uh -huh. um, the solfege. The solfege. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, the there would be like this. Um, ba -da -da. That's that's an or like an ornamentation style. Okay. So that. listen to a lot of Hindustani music, you kind of get the, the feeling of how to do it. They they kind of notate it, but the way it's oh, really? um, learned is very through, like orally. It's, because uh -huh. even in Baroque music, would they write all the ornaments <coughs> out? No. It's because it can be very, when there's so much ornamentation, it can be <coughs> difficult to, to write out, or it, a lot of it is very intuitive to your own feeling. Whereas, obviously, Western music is still more harmonic based, so they could still write out a lot of the, the ornamentations in Baroque music and just kind of get it right, because it is a little bit more, I don't want to say digital isn't the right word, but there is a, there's less sliding, right? Whereas Hindustani and Karnataka music, there's so much sliding around, it's, it's really hard to, to notate exactly how to slide, and, because each rab, the way you slide, is different too. And, the feeling of it, and it's also very personal, so it's very difficult to notate. But there is a system where you can write, like, uh, <coughs> I have a, sometimes, I mean, I have books of written things, but I've also written my own stuff down, so the way, but these are just skeletons, you know, it gives you no basis of how to play, like, this was just, if I were to, and 
that's not how it, you're supposed to play it at all. It's... It might have some basis in because a lot of like Buddhist it started in India, right? So, so I was also like thinking about the scale and it, the like kind of hypochondric. Like, I'm not. What, how many do they have? It's like six. No, it's just like a gamelan. Are there many different types of pentatonic? I don't know. Just play like a bongo on pieces. Oh. That's what I can do. Well, <laughs> I've seen the scale of the zoo all the time. Well, like in, in Kannada music, there are many. There, so there are, like I said, the mela karkaragas, which have seven notes. So those are like the. Oh. oh. Where, but within oh. those, or in the Kannada system, within that, you can have called janya ragas, which are derivative ragas. So you can have five notes that correspond to a certain mela karta raga, but they're, they're its own species. So that's where you can actually create millions of different ragas. Mm -hmm. But in practice, you can, well, but there are many pentatonic scales in Indian music, so there's more. <coughs> website it's called music in motion and it's a, it, it kind of it outlines all these in Hindustan drugs um, so it gives you the tone material but obviously that's not that just says very little bit about what actually um, the drug. so Bihar so can you guys read that or? Bihag is a major rag, so it's a, a very uh, standard rag in Hindustan music. 
um, which is equally popular with the vocalists and instrumentalists. It is one of the rags which, or whose interpretation seems to have changed in the past couple of decades. We are very open to, to change. So the tone material, sa, I should go over the, so the solfege, sa is do, re is mi, do, is re, actually. ga is mi, ma is uh, fa, uh, and then it has lowercase ma corresponds to, so there's movable do in, in Hindi sign music. Lowercase ma corresponds to F natural, the, the, the high, or the uppercase corresponds to F sharp. So there's both of them in this, in the tone collection, but that doesn't mean the half sounds like this. It sounds like this. The kind of, which is called like a pucker or a chalan, which is like a, an identifying marker, maybe someone's mole on their face, like, oh, that's that person. But, so when ascending, you won't use the sharp ma. stuff that's a part of it, but the way it's put together, you have to... Like if a musician were to read this, a Hindustan musician, they would say, you can't learn from this, this is, <laughs> this is just like reductionist. <clears throat> but you can learn something from it, you know, <coughs> nothing, so it actually can be very good. So it says, whereas re and ka are weak and omitted in the ascent. So when I was playing, I didn't play. So when you're improvising in bihag, you can't just be, oh, I'll take these notes and I'll do whatever I want with them. You have ga and mi are like the main characters, so you really want to bring out these certain notes. Like when people begin an ala, which is like the begin opening of a concert, it's very just improvisatory. It presents the rag for the first time. For bihag, they often start. Rather than like, seeing it on a page, you wouldn't want to teach the tripod first. 
Just like in Western music? Actually, because yeah. tritone is a very harmonic right. uh, idea. So that's not, in, in, when we're learning Indian style violin, we shift right away because you have to start sliding. Yeah. So that, like when Western music, the <coughs> shifting will keep it for later on. Yeah. Uh, but you slide, you start sliding right away in, in, in Indian music. Did you start uh, Western violin or? I kind of did kind of both at the same okay. time. It was good or bad, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, and some characteristic phrases of of the uh, hop. So do you notice me when I started the ala? I did. Conservatories in, in India, but a lot of people are against that way of mm -hmm. teaching. It's kind of like the way they try to put jazz into conservatories. Oh. They try to standardize that a little bit, but not not. Mm -hmm. completely, it's not completely analogous because jazz is also a very, a very intuitive mm -hmm. feel. Even Western classical music, a lot of it is intuitive, mm -hmm. but it's become so standardized that it's it, it, good or bad. It, 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 it's good in that. Standardization of what you can learn very well without having a, a teacher, and that, that's a good thing. Is I mean, how much, how many people can find all oh, of a good teacher? You can learn by yourself. Mm -hmm. Whereas, so there is in Carnatic music, if there's a lot of standardization, in Hindustani music, it's a little bit less. So you kind of need more than a teacher. Um, so, but well, let me play. I'll play a little bit of a song. So, so I played a little bit of the Allah, and this is a little bit, this is the bandesh, which is just kind of two lines, and then you would go off and improvise a lot on it. So Radha Krishna, they are two, they're kind of the epitome of the, the uh, most beautiful love, uh, earth, or love that can be between two people. <coughs> but it's, it's described in a sort of earthly way, but it's considered to be a metaphor for divine love. So uh, in, in that way, it's both secular and sacred. Oh, where do you see it? Oh, it, nowadays it's in con the concert hall, in concerts, like, I mean, uh, I think Ustad Ali Khan, he came to voice, and they played, 
now it's, it's everywhere. Before, like hundreds of years ago, this was in the courts. Mm. It's kind of like a similar patronage kind of system. And then after yeah, the free market, now it's it's open to everybody. Anyone can learn. Do people like play it um, like at parties? Yeah. Like social events? Yeah, yeah, very much. Actually, it's kind of music for that. It's like Hindustani oh, music especially. It's right. like a lot of it is chill out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My friend had a graduation party and she played, I mean, she's Indian and she played a, a, a set and like did a bunch of vocals and like a yeah, yeah. show. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like she, like Jeremiah was saying, she played a bunch of ragas, she did a bunch of ragas. It's mm -hmm. kind of like that. You'll say, I'm going to be playing a sonata. In, in Western music, but in, in Indian music, you'll say, I'll be presenting the rag. So you'll really know the nuances of the rag, where, what, what phrases go <coughs> where, what. You really spend a lot of time getting to know the rag, like a person, and so you can really present it. So like, that's kind of the, the way people say they will, I'm going to present the rag. Um, now going into. <coughs> A certain rag, two rags can have the same tone material, so that's why I say kind of avoid saying a rag is a scale. Mm -hmm. um, so this rag called Maru Bihag, it has the same tone material um, as the. <coughs> Actually, let me go back one little bit. So Bihag, it can be, it was, it's a part of. There's n there's no uh, consensus. It can be part a part of the thought of Bilawal because it has both this ma, the, the F natural. But it also has the F sharp. So what is it a part of? Is it a part of Bilal or is it part of Kalyan? There's no, it's hard to classify and there's, there's a lot of um, disagreement about that. So that's why I was saying Tats are a little bit tenuous. Okay, so um, Maru Bihag, it has the same tone material as Bihag, um, but it has a different uh, ascent and descent. The dominance of sharp Ma and Re in Maru Bihag gives this drug a very different flavor. So again, same tone material, but certain things are brought out. Um, so you can go can look at. Uh, so the modern rag can be considered as a variety of rag So it's the same tone material. The sharp ma, which is dominant in the rag, is emphasized, and like we said, some of the characteristic phrases are, so, so let me play this.
Vietnam can. Yeah. Yeah. So if we go back to what we talk about behind the Maru Bihar in So we have help you to uh, recognize it as maru bihag and not bihag, although they have the same tone uh, tone to you. You recognize it as a person, different person. Uh, okay, so 